one of the hottest shows in LA. If you're not here, you're in the wrong spot. There is a guy in a Hallmark store reading a card that says what he kind of wants to say, you know, or says it exactly, but not in a good way. And he stands there scratching his forearm and thinking, yeah, this will work. And then somewhere, five months earlier, a guy writes the poem he does not like for the card he would never give the wife he doesn't have and regrets the seven more he has to write by five o'clock. And don't get me wrong. I'm tired. So it would be easy to say nothing, to let him buy that card and go. But see, I know that this is a card that ends relationships. Yeah, that by signing his name to this card, he will never see her naked again. So I say, what are you doing? And he said, what? And I say, your job. What is it? Not a poet, obviously. And he said, why? And I say, because I'm a poet. So I know the words, they're like radioactive material, powerful. If you're not trained in how to handle them safely, then people can get hurt. This card in your hand hurts people. And besides, if you give your girl that card, all you did was give some guy you don't know three bucks to tell your girl you love her in his way. So you gotta tell him in your way. You know, like, like here, let me explain. Like if you're a if you're a mathematician, okay, then it's simple. You Count the number of steps it takes for her to come upstairs to bed. Count how many times your eye goes to the door when you are expecting her home. Okay, when she says, how much do you love me? Be able to answer her back to the decimal point. Calculate the area of a heart using imaginary numbers and explain how a muscle the size of two fists can expand itself wide enough to hold fast the heavens. Devise a formula for love whereby the weight of your devotion squared times the amount of times you have kissed along her spine while she is asleep is equal to all the happily ever afters in the world. Yeah. <laughs> and I can tell by the look in his eyes that he was not a mathematician. So I said, I said, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking in the world. What about outside of the world because you are an astronaut? No, I'm not an astronaut. Well, if I were an astronaut, I would cut a lock of her hair while she was sleeping. When she cuts her thumb making dinner, I'm going to steal the blood-stained towel. I'm going to hold them in my lap during takeoff. And as soon as we are in space, I will release the blood and the hair on the trajectory with the sun. And then, three months later, Corona, half finished on the table, keys already in my hand, getting up to leave when my friend says, well, it's not like the world revolves around her, you know. I would, uh-oh, turn with a grin and say, fun story about that.